So I just read a really interesting article on uh, carbon farming as the future of agriculture. Uh, I thought what I'd do here, since I am a carbon farmer and have been for the last 10 years, would show you a little bit of what carbon farming looks like. Uh, this here is um, a mobile chicken pen uh, that we move through pasture here which includes both uh, steers and chickens. And uh, these chickens are actually getting butchered tomorrow. Uh, they're, ready, they're ready to go. <coughs> uh, we home butcher, which we can. And uh, I gotta say, you know, we're a small operation. This year we're doing about 280 birds. Uh, but our return on investment last year for the birds that we sell, and we do it uh, off-farm uh, retail, was a, was like 160 percent return on investment for selling chickens retail. Uh, so not only are these things good for the uh, environment, but they uh, are are pretty lucrative. So these animals here move through this pasture. Uh, I'm going to take you over to where the steers are and show you isn't this a great office this is my office that I get to uh, work in uh, every day uh, we do a lot of different things out here besides harvest carbon and carbon farming is known by some other terms too I mean there's uh, regenerative agriculture there's restoration agriculture there's um, uh, what's what's another good one? Uh, holistic management, another way to look at it. Uh, different terms for what's basically the same practice, which is using biological techniques to uh, put carbon back in the ground where it belongs, and uh, you know produce food, uh, sequester carbon. It's a, it's a great way to do agriculture, and we, we've seen nothing but like miraculous improvement of our farmland and uh, our our uh, health and uh, just kind of everything. And why wouldn't you want to work in an office like this? These here are hazelnuts, which are producing right now, and they've been here five years. They're they're planted on a swale, which is an Australian. Uh, uh, method of drought remediation. So uh, you cap we're ca we not only capture capture carbon, we capture rain and s distribute it around different parts of where we are grazing animals. <coughs> and uh, what? Again, this is my office, and what I do is. Uh, put carbon back in the ground and put food on the table. Uh, and I make money doing it. Uh, like I said, we, our return on investment on the chickens last year was like 160 percent. We also do pigs and beef and both of those were over 100 uh, percent return on investment. <clears throat> that includes what we sell and it includes what we eat because I consider investing in the best food possible uh, to be a benefit. Uh, even if we uh, don't sell that for money, we're not spending money buying the best food there is to eat. So here's the swale over here, walking over to where the steers are. And here they are. We do uh, manage intensive grazing. So we move them uh, right now twice a day uh, through a smaller area uh, so they eat everything in front of them and they distribute poop and pee uniformly all through this area. Uh, and yeah, all of their food is free. All they get is grass. And they start their lives about five miles away from here and they end their lives about 10 miles away from here uh, and all of their food is produced by 
uh, sunshine and rainwater. So this whole thing about there being, what is it, 600 gallons of, of uh, water on a pound of beef, uh, it's ridiculous. Yeah, in the industrial model, that might be the case if all you're doing is feeding them irrigated hay and grain. But out here, these guys are pretty much uh, eating for free. We do have to make some hay in the wintertime. Uh, and there's some petroleum on making hay, uh, but the hay all comes from here. So, it, again, I don't know. I don't know why anyone who's doing farming wouldn't want to get in on this kind of farming. Uh, managing animals is really easy. It's simple. I'm 65 years old, and I can just do this forever. The hardest work that, that we do around this place is uh, in the garden. You know, weeding and stuff, and we're trying to get to more no-till permaculture gardening, but the, the garden's still the most work that we do, and we're thinking of ramping that down and just not producing stuff for sale, but just for ourselves, because we really don't need to sell stuff out of the garden. We're doing fine with everything else. But uh, isn't this a uh, bucolic scene at the office, uh, putting carbon in the ground. You know, and, and one of the things I learned recently about, about carbon in the ground is, you know, when, when carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere and the atmosphere is touching the ocean, it just gets absorbed into the ocean, becoming carbonic acid, affecting uh, life in the ocean. And one of the things that people don't talk about uh, regarding uh, carbon going into the ocean is the food, the bottom of the food chain there is phytoplankton and as the pH in the ocean changes and affects phytoplankton, uh, phytoplankton provides 60 percent of the oxygen on the planet that we breathe. 60 percent of it comes from phytoplankton so you're really don't want to get rid of CO2 into the ocean. You want to put it back in the ground uh, where it came from in the first place. Look at these guys. You know, they're having a marvelous time. These are soil engineers. Before they're anything else, these guys are soil engineers. Carbon farming. It's the future of farming. Uh, it's coming on slow. Uh, the big guys uh, still want to use chemicals and petroleum. Uh, as long as they think they can make some money, but they're they're gonna they're gonna change too. They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna convert because this this thing here is as good as it gets. You build up your soil, uh, you get free fertility, your water infiltration gets better. Uh, there's just nothing like it. So this is my pitch for uh, carbon farming, regenerative agriculture, whatever the heck you want to call it. Uh, you want to do this if you have an opportunity. Uh, you know, contact me through through the uh, YouTube site, or we have a good Facebook page, and uh, you know we can put you in the right directions to what you want to do in your retirement. Like I said, I'm I'm 65. I'm just getting started in doing this. I love it. I've been doing this for 10 years, and it does nothing but get better and better and better. Uh, have a nice day. This is Mike up in northern Wisconsin doing carbon farming.